3D Party Llama Acrylic Nailer Tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Polish. Hi everyone! In today's video, I'm going to be showing you a mildly Cinco de Mayo design. It's not overly Cinco de Mayo, uh, but it's a llama that's a very it's a festive llama. So this could be for a llama themed party or anything. I love llamas. If you have seen a couple of my videos in the past, you may know that. Um, I also have a lot of llama sweaters, which I wore all throughout the holiday season. This one though is a festive like birthday party, Cinco de Mayo, any kind of, any kind of I don't know, any kind of party llama. It's a party llama. And the, so the cool thing with this little guy is the llama itself is very easy. If you want to take it that extra step like I did and make the little the little tassels that go underneath it, I actually made these and you can buy these. These are definitely available for purchase for nail art purposes on various nail art stores. But I decided I would try to make them and it took me a long time to figure out how to make them just because it's so small that getting the thread to do what I wanted it to took a little bit of... Uh, figuring. So if you are looking to make one, I would recommend trying my technique first and seeing if that works for you before, you know. So if you want to make the little tassels, give it a try. Once you get it down, it's not that hard, but it does take a little bit of practice. So I hope you guys like this design and don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. So to begin with, I'm going to create an overlay across the entire nail with a light minty green. I wanted to, like I said, I wanted to keep this kind of light and bright and just just fun. And since I knew my tassels were going to be a richer color, they were all going to be kind of like a darker, darker, richer color. I wanted the whole nail, the rest of the nail to just be kind of light and bright. So I'm going to just, like I said, mint green and then encase the nail with a layer of clear acrylic to make sure it is nice and strong. This particular, these nail tips that I'm using are so straight that it takes a, actually quite a bit to get an apex in there. So that's one thing that's kind of funny with nail tips. Some of them just lend themselves to giving you an apex. They just sort of do it themselves. The nail tips have a nice curve in them that just kind of promotes it and some of them would just fight you the whole way this one fights me anyways just sidetracked separate thing file the nail into shape after it is filed and is nice and smooth then you're going to want to sculpt the shape of your llama so i'm going to start out with white acrylic and pretty much the entire llama is white so i began with the body and then i'm going to continue his neck going up and i wanted the entire llama in this I didn't want to just do like a, just his head or anything. I wanted the whole llama. So I started out, like I said, with his head or with his body and then his head going up. And then I'm going to be adding one hind leg to start with. And as you're doing this, there really isn't too much that's 3D. It's not overly 3D dimensional little details or anything, but there is some dimension on um, the hind leg. Since llamas are so fluffy or so woolly and thick, you can definitely create lots of very bumpy shapes. They don't have much of the little fine details on them, the little like elbows and knees and things because their fur sort of smooths that over, which makes it easier when you're sculpting something like this because they're just kind of fluffy. So they're like a giant marshmallow, which I've never really considered a llama marshmallow before, but when you're sculpting it like this, it's kind of what you think of. So then I also added uh, the front leg, the tail, and then I'm going to be doing the little snout and then ears. So this is all very, very simple. Like I said, just kind of fun and goofy. So there's the two ears going up. And so then now I'm going to be using color acrylic and here you can really switch up and you don't have to match what I did at all. I started out with purple for the little pointy party hat. I did one of those traditional like cone shaped party hats that you always think of when you're doing a, I don't know, birthday party sort of thing or a, you see them a lot at New Year's too, but you know, the cone shaped hat. And then I'm going to be adding my saddle on my llama with teal. Like I said, you can really switch up your colors. I would look at what kind of thread you have to begin with so that the colors that you're doing on your on your llama match the colors that go with your, your thread. Because you might not have, I mean, you kind of have to match it together to see what you have. I don't have much thread, but I do a lot of acrylic, so I have to work it that way. If you have a lot of thread, but not much acrylic, do it the other way. I added his little feet with brown acrylic and then I, he's got all these tassels that are tied around his neck. So I'm just going to be adding the tassels themselves, which are just little circles of acrylic with all sorts of colors, yellow, teal, orange, purple, blue, you know, like I said, have fun with it. Then with a Sharpie, I'm going to mark where I want my tassels to be on the bottom of the nail or on the tip of the nail. And then I'm just going to take a really pokey little e-file bit, a really skinny, a really skinny bit. And I'm going to be carving through those holes. So just really work with it and try to get it as close to that that spot you made with your sharpie as possible so that your little tassels are evenly spaced across the tip of the nail 
Make sure you have no Sharpie marks left behind. And then we're going to add all of the little details on our llama. So begin with black lines. I'm just going to do some outlining. So I'm going to start by outlining his saddle. Add the little strap that goes underneath his tummy with that black line as well. Add the little part that ties around his neck on his tassels. Add the lines connecting all the tassels to the part that ties around his neck. And then outline all of the rest of the llama. So outline just around the perimeter. When you're doing the outlines, like I said, he is fluffy. So don't do a smooth line. Do kind of a like a dashed or a, a furry line. Add the little outlines around his party hat. And I also added like a little poof on the top of the hat. And then add all of the other details on his face. Add a nose and an eye. And then apply some gel sealer over the background. So over all of that minty green. Make sure you don't plug your tassel holes while you are applying the gel sealer. You want to make sure those holes do stay holes. After that's cured, apply matte top coat over your llama. So now to make your tassel, I'm going to begin and I have a pointy tweezers, which I don't think the point is really matter or really matters, but I'm going to be wrapping the thread around that a whole bunch of times. So just keep wrapping and wrapping and wrapping. And then I set that down and the weight of the tweezers holds your thread in place. Trim off where you have your thread at that point and then tie those two ends into a nice little knot. So this is the first part that's really important. So make sure you have a really good knot on that. Trim off the extra tails of your thread. And then it gets a little hinky. So at this point, that that's the easy part. Like I said, once you kind of get the process in place, then you can figure this out a lot easier. Put your little jump ring through your, your thread loops and then make that, secure that. So then take it off really quickly. So you take the thread all the way off the tweezers and then you put it back on just one half of the tweezer. String that over an e-file bit, which I know sounds crazy, but that's going to hold it so that your your little loop is really kind of held in place. And then string another thing, string another piece of thread through that underneath around those rings. So you have the thread held in place by the little jump ring and then the tweezers. And then you can tie the knot around it the other way with another piece of thread and then apply a drop of nail glue over your knot so that it doesn't untie itself. After that is dried, you can take, which nail glue dries so quick, take it off the tweezers, off the e-file bits, and then trim off, trim the ends, get rid of any of those extra little, little pieces, and then that's it. But like I said, kind of, it might take some practice to get that part down. I might recommend just buying them if you're thinking about making this design. And then afterwards, you can go ahead and you can put all of your little tassels through your nail. So open up the rings again, string them through the nail, close the ring, and you are all set with that. Like I said buy them. I would recommend it. I decided that I thought it wouldn't be that hard to make them. And then I was starting to do it. I was like, oh man, I don't know if this is going to work, but I figured it out. Believe me, I had a couple other ideas of how to do this in the beginning, but having that e-file and stringing it over the e-file really does help. So that's my, my biggest key there is to make sure that you have some, something to put the little ring over while you're tying the knot around it. So I hope you like this and please share any recreations with me on Facebook or Instagram. I'd love to see them and I will see you in my next video. Bye.